Welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to cast your mind back to a, a year ago, this very month, where I was back at the car. Now it's no often I'm first back at the car, I'll say that. But there's Ross and Alex disappeared into the forest and they came out with a bag of just looked like orange plaster seen to me. But it turns out it's chanterelle mushrooms. So the ears pricked up over the, over the past year when Ross has been out fishing with us and Alex and quizzes them about mushrooms and then obviously we went on and we done the catch and cook video which we foraged some mushrooms. So now I find myself <laughs> And we're driving home for fishing. Get a mushroom! <laughs> I'm constantly looking left and right and not looking where I'm bloody meant to be looking. But this, this is exactly what's happened here. The wind cut us short for our, our fly fishing session uh, that we wrapped up today. Um, pop a link. But driving down the road, as you can hear, the road's not too far away. Just out the corner of my eye, I was like, Alex, there's a mushroom! Looks like one of the big roll things. He's like, we need to go back and get it. So a quick U-turn, here we are. So again, not properly dressed for the occasion, or the, or the task at hand. We've even got our basket, we've not even got our knives, nothing, we've got a carrier bag. And according to Alex, we're in pretty much prime, a prime, prime location for finding some mushrooms. So we're going to get a go. I'm right on cue, air it rain, after we say it, it's lovely. So right, let's see what we can find. <laughs> so as Gordon says, driving down the road and he seems this big mushroom, so I'm going to turn back, have a look at it. Uh, it's not what we hoped for. We were hoping for a nice big uh, porcini or something like that. Now it is in the same family, and we've come across a couple of them. Uh, we've already picked a couple, but here's another two nestled in an the sphagnum moss uh, and I think they're definitely a bolete they're definitely a bolete but if we get in here and we'll have a look at this one I can see there's slight dark spots here on the stem which tells me it might be well it's been munched a little bit but this black spot on the stem and the fact that we're in amongst a load of beech trees eh, sorry birch birch trees tells me i think this is a an orange birch bullet which is edible it is edible I'm not entirely sure how tasty it is but i'm fairly confident that that in fact i'm, I'm very confident that that's what we have here and there's another one looks like it just along here Slightly darker in colour, but again, it should still have the. Yeah, there we go, you can see that the black spots. Not not as good a condition, but once the spores are taken off, should still be left with a nice bit of meat. So there we go. Not the porcini that we thought we saw, or Gordon thought he saw. But yeah, a couple of orange birch bullets. I reckon there'll be more here. Yeah, definitely an edible. 100% an edible. I don't think it's one of the best bullets. But there must be, it looks fantastic here. There's loads of birch trees, there's some pine up here. And it's mossy, it's wet. There must be something else, there must be more. So we'll have a wee wander around. We'll see if we can get a sort of collection of mushrooms. Uh, and Gordon can tell me how good those <laughs> Birch bullets taste, but it's coming into we're just about September time now, so I'm really hoping to find some chanterelles. There might be some chanterelles still kicking about somewhere, and some wood hedgehogs. Wood hedgehogs are now my favourite. I found a couple last week, and they're fantastic eating mushrooms. So we're going to see. Let's go and see what else we can find. Right, I think I've maybe found these. Sonic the Hedgehog ones, I think they are. We better give him a shout. Alex! I think I might have found your Sonic the Hedgehog ones. Really? Aye. Going, going on by with you. Sonic the Hedgehog. What are the hedgehogs? Wood the Oh, they are. 
Yeah, nah, hundred percent. I found this. I'll come back to that one. Uh, it's not as exciting as these, however. Is it definitely? I think it is. I don't know why I picked them up. Trying to break them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beauty. So as I was saying, hoping for these. These are my new favourite mushroom. Wood hedgehogs. A couple of them. Thought they're out in here. You can see where they get their name from. Because underneath they don't have gills. They don't have spores. They've got loads of these little spikes. Hence the name hedgehogs. There's a couple here. Look at these ones. <laughs> Look at that. Funky looking mushroom. But I think, I think they're better than chanterelles. Like I said, found a couple last week. Tried them for the first time. And I, those are great. Class is a gourmet mushroom. Maybe there's more. <laughs> Maybe there's more. Let's have a look. But what I did find, not quite as exciting as the hedgehogs. But that is a milk cap of some sort. Absolutely no idea of what type. So it will it will be getting left. Definitely not coming home. We can see it's called a milk cap because it, it actually once you break it slightly. You've got a sort of milky sort of liquid. And apparently, there are some poisonous milk caps that have this sort of white liquid. Actually, ah, get merry in your fingers then. Yeah. As long as you don't ingest it, it's fine. So we're leaving that one. Don't want that because I'm not too sure what it is. If it had orange sort of milk, I'd be thinking about taking it. But look at those. Hedgehogs, nice one, right? What else we got? I've not seen you this excited. She's caught that big roach. I'm actually enjoying mushroom <laughs> porridge just as much as fishing lately. Right, let's get them in the bag and let's see, see what else we can find. So mushrooms, we've seen a lot of them. I'm really getting into them, but it's not just mushrooms that are kind of useful around about here. Down here, probably one of the most common plants you'll find in the woods. Wood sorrel, a fantastic salad ingredient. It's great for salads, it's great for a like little garnishes, it's great with fish. It's really citrusy, it's almost like a Granny Smith apples. Uh, and let's, let's get a nice fresh one, we'll give it to our, our guinea pig. I'm not sure where he's trying to, <laughs> to end me or no, but. Here we go. What are you saying? Citrusy? Citrusy, apple like Granny Smith apple. They give it a really good chew. It's actually really nice. Look here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good one to remember. Can't really mistake it for anything else. Three little love hearts. Good for salads, good for garnishes. Good for pestos. No, it would, re it would replace. Granny Smith is a. It's really like Granny Smith. Granny Smith. Granny Smith. Aye. Granny Smith. Aye. Aye. Nah, really good. That's magic. We go good with fish. So that's maybe something to think about for our. You think some of us? Our next catch and cook. Aye, can do. There we go, mushroom number. No idea what number is now. <laughs> We've found quite a few. This one, this one's quite a good one actually. You can see people have been slicing bits off it already. This is, I believe, in fact, you know what? I'm not sure. I think it's blackening polypore or giant polypore. But now I'm second guessing it. Because it's not turned black. This has been sliced off. And you'd expect that to be black. So it might be... 
It may be chicken in the woods. Because it's not turned black. Let's take some anyway. We'll take some of that, definitely. It's probably a wee bit overdone. Nah, that I think that's chicken in the woods. Does it taste like chicken? Aye. Cause it's not it's not going black. And it's on what tree is it on? It looks like it's on an oak. An old oak tree. So I think Tell you what, you cook it and eat it and let me know how you feel. <laughs> it's definitely not, it's, it's not, I thought it was polypore, I thought it was giant polypore, but it's not, it's not blackening at all. So yeah, it might be, it might be chicken in the woods. I don't know when you mentioned earlier you wanted to find. Uh, it tastes, if it is chicken in the woods, it's that yellow colour underneath as well. Whereas polypore, I think, would be white underneath. I think we'll need, I'll need to double check this one when I get home. Take some anyway. It's, de it's definitely one or, one or the other. Uh, and it's probably a wee bit over, but it, if it's... I know. If it was giant polypore, it would, it would break into like fibrous, sort of... I think it's chicken of the woods. 100%. No, 90% chicken of the woods. But again, if you know, let us know in the comments. But yeah, let's take a we'll take a bit of this. Yeah, it's just a bit it's a bit overdone, it's a bit dry. But the edges, I reckon the edges would be would be quite good. The kind of lighter part. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it is. Chicken woods. Okay, okay. I'll take a little bit, I'll not take too much. I'll we'll take a little bit and we'll give it a go. Well, we're still at it. <laughs> uh, we did find some, some nice mushrooms by the, the roadside, uh, up the top end of Loch Lomond, but we just didn't quite find what we were after. Uh, Gordon in particular is still to try uh, chanterelles on toast <laughs> and chanterelles are probably one of the nicest mushrooms out there so we're back out, we half day Gordon swung by mine after after a half day at work and yeah we're back in the woods and straight away we've, we've, we've found what we're after uh, so just down here underneath this beech tree downy beech and mushrooms hand in hand we have found a small patch of just trying to get this one out gently Golden chanterelles. Lovely mushroom. So he's finally going to get his mushrooms on toast. I reckon there's a lot more here. In fact, I can see some dotted around over here. So, aye, let's let's collect a few of these. This is an area that I know. I've been here before, uh, and I know there's a few other surprises kicking about. Hopefully. So yeah, let's get these in the bag. We'll take a wander up this hillside. See what else we can find. But just before we do, I just want to reassure you that this is a fishing video. But for now, let's see if we can find a few more of these. So as good as that roadside mark was, when I say mark, it's fishing terms, isn't it? But that, that area on the roadside that we, we found, well, we thought we found orange birch bullets, that was a few days ago. And since then, I've had a wee look into it. I don't think they were orange birch bullets. They're definitely birch bullets. I think they were brown birch bullets. The surprise that I was hoping to find right about here is right down there. And you'll see the difference when I show you this one. I am going to pick it. It's, it's been eaten a little bit, but I reckon still useful that's a cracking looking mushroom that is 100% an orange birch bullet and you can see the difference in 
the cap colour. Quite, quite vividly orange. So I've already got a few of these at home. So this one can has been eaten a wee bit, but it's it's salvageable. We can definitely do something with that. Yeah. Orange birch palette. There'll be a few more about hopefully, maybe in better condition. <laughs> Happy days, you wasn't right? Looks like the mushrooms and uh, sorry, chanterelles and toast will be happening. Stumbled across a couple. A yellowy orange. Turn around. That's the key. That's the key, apparently. Aye. False gills, not actual gills, more like ridges or folds. So that's. that's it. Happily to see that's a chanterelle. Yep. A couple of them. I'm going to try this toast carry on for a while. Admit, but I feel last year when you and Ross were starting on us, I was not interested at all. I genuinely am going to get into it. Good exercise. Yeah. Exercise, fresh air, and free food. Earlier in the video, I found that big sort of bracket style fungus uh, coming out of a, a dead piece of oak, I think it was. And initially I thought it was giant polypore. But then I had a wee look and seen that it wasn't quite blackening and uh, it turned out to be chicken in the woods and it was chicken in the woods. Uh, it was a wee bit over, it was a wee bit woody when we tried it. Uh, mine went in the bin. Hi Gordon, you, you, you demolished yours didn't you? I, I enjoyed mine. <laughs> yeah, I did anyway. But yeah, the giant polypore. I was out yesterday without a camera unfortunately and I did come across some uh, and we've got it. <laughs> I thought I'll bring it out today and have a wee look at it because it's quite an impressive <laughs> bit of mushroom. That there is giant polypore, blackening polypore. And you can see where I've cut it, just along the bottom there, just along the base. It is starting to turn black. This is a mushroom that gets, it gets a bad name for itself in all the guides and the sort of books that you'll read for it not tasting great. Apparently it's quite stringy, it's quite bitter, it's quite, it's quite woody. I've tried it. I tried it the last time I found this and I quite like it. It is. It's more like chicken than the chicken of the woods was. But I think that was maybe because the chicken of the woods was a wee bit over. But this stuff, it just, it strips up. And I'll show you that. I will show you that later on in the video where we'll actually cook some of it along with the chanterelles and the bullets and things like that. Uh, it's very much the texture of, of chicken. But yeah, cracking big bit of, big bit of fungus. <laughs> Giant polypore. We're definitely getting through the mushrooms and we've collected a fair few so I need to think of something to do with them now. Right. That one's in great condition. You know, hardly any damage to the pores. Bad damage to the stem. Black flecks. And if you remember back to the roadside, where Gordon thought he'd seen a penny bun. It was this. We initially thought it was an orange birch bullet. It's a brown birch bullet. You can see the complete difference in colour of the cap. Not as tasty as the orange one, but still pretty good, especially if you slice it up and dry it. I can 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 concur on that. Oh, that's right. You had it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that one's that's one for the bag. There you go, side by side. Orange, birch bullet, brown, birch bullet. Both get those sort of dark flocules, I think you call them, on the stem, or in the stipe, as they're called in a mushroom. But yeah, 
Decent eating, real good eating, not bad, better dried. And I think that's what we'll do with both of them. Mushrooms everywhere. We're going to play spot the mushroom. Alex spotted a decent looking mushroom in amongst all that. Bang centre of the screen. Right, he's absolutely loving this. Spotted that one a mile away. Another cracker. Finding a few now. Bit eaten, but still nice and fresh. Take the pores off. I keep saying it, but definitely take the pores off. The pores make it a little bit slimy. I suppose if you're drying it, you could keep them on, but I prefer to take them off and just uh, eat the, the firm flesh. Well, there we go. It took us two sessions, but we finally got the chanterelles that we were after. I've been after. God has been <laughs> after. Uh, we no longer have the hedgehogs. They've been well demolished. Uh, but yeah, plenty of chanterelles. Some lovely orange birch bleats. One brown birch bleat and then a big bat of giant polypore as well. So plenty to think about and plenty to eat. But I did say earlier on, it is a fishing video. Angling 360 is about fishing, but when you've got this on your doorstep, you can't, you can't, you can't knock it. But fishing, what's the plan? The plan for this one, it's something I saw on YouTube years ago. I was bit formed in by the, um, any of his watch there, I'm pulling the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. So he's not everybody's cup of tea, but I, I love the guy. I think he's brilliant. And it was on that YouTube channel that I saw uh, don't laugh at this. I don't like the name, the common name, the dogfish. Like for, for today's purposes, we'll call it dogfish. Yes, I'm not going to call it the name I'm quite fond of, is the cat shark. It's too cute. <laughs> <laughs> but I apparently it's good eating. Now, everybody knows of dogfish up and down the length and breadth of the coast of Britain. East, west, and south, everywhere. north, coast, you'll catch. If you've never caught a dogfish, then I don't know, I don't know what your name was. Um, but you know what's going to happen? Nah, we're not going to get one. We're not going to get one. <laughs> now we do, we do pretty much catch one every time we go sea fishing. I think maybe once. However, we are going to try the lesser spotted dogfish. As a catch and cook. As this a catch and cook. Catch and cook video. So, some of you might be going, oh, we can do it. It is legal in it, it's all above board, there's, there's no... There's loads of them as well, they're, they're sustainable, they're, they're not endangered. And that's what we're trying to do with this catch and cook, is target species that, that there's loads of. You know, there's absolutely millions of them. Uh, but they're unusual, not everyone eats them. Uh, a lot of a faff, I think, to, to prepare them. Aye, the skin, the skin of a snake, uh, I'm getting told. We'll give that a go. Uh, we've never done it before, so... So we'll, we'll, we'll see. But, 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 you might get a good laugh, we'll okay, see how it goes. But we're going to do breakfast and lunch. Which I just found out off Alex there, he's going to make a nice, I'll hand you back to Alex with a nice mushroom pate. We said this, we said this in the macro video that we're looking to utilise as much natural resources for food as possible, not just the fish. God mentioned dogfish and I was like, oh, I don't know if mushrooms are going to go with a dogfish. So, we'll do mushrooms separately. I think a mushroom patty. I like patty. Uh, mushroom patty, maybe on, on some toast or on a bit of bread. And then... For the, the dogfish later on, I think it'll be. I think we need some veg. I guess where we're going now. Luckily, I know a place. <laughs> that, yes. Those mush mushrooms, mushrooms daft. Those tomatoes, I can assure you, are the nicest tomatoes I have ever eaten in my life. Hi, that looks quite good. Full of tomatoes. I mean, absolutely. Shocker. Full of tomatoes. And I think we'll take some of them. Try to think of something that'll go with dogfish. <laughs> <laughs> eh, hey, so we'll get a load of tomatoes. The old chilies are starting to look pretty good now as well. There's loads of these. 
the salsa I made last week and I put two of them in it. Spicy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know, they're nice jellies those. Uh, so take some tomatoes, take some chillies. I think there's tons of aubergines now. Absolutely loads, I think there's a nice big one down there. Possibly. Let's have a look. Yep, I'll take him. One thing I never knew about aubergines, <laughs> from the short bought ones to these ones. Spiky. They are very spiky. And the wife Lindsay, she discovered that I know. Yeah, be careful with them. Yeah. Loads of these. There's Tasty as well. So many of them. I love the wee thing, what is going to go with dogfish. I've got a few ideas, I've got a few ideas. Let's keep it seasonal as well. Uh, they were coming almost into October. Halloween, just around the corner. So it has to be one veg that we must use. We've got to get some pumpkins. Uh, we've got a few different types. If you follow me, follow me around this way first actually. Right, we've got a few hiding in here. And these are what they call baby bears. So they're just like a, a small version of your jack o' lanterns. Your typical Halloween pumpkin. Not the greatest tasting. They're good for ornaments around about that time of year, but they're not great for the table. However, we've got something a wee bit better. Back right here. We've got a few in here, we've got these little squashies. These are buffy balls. And some big yellow things over here as well. I don't really know what they are. Or where they are. There's a few hiding in here. But the one that we want. That one over there. That's the one. Right, right. at the end there. That's it. But the one we want is in here. Oh, I'm away the wrong way. They're kind of hiding to find them probably. That. Probably the best eating pumpkin around. Crown Prince. However, that one's quite big. <laughs> it's even a slightly smaller one. You'll do nicely. Bit of time, bit of rosemary as well. We'll go nice with the mushrooms. I know I don't look like a guy that eats a lot of veg, right? But this is my second bag of mushrooms. Mushrooms? Ah, that's, that's done it again. It's like you with sunsets <laughs> and sunrises, isn't it? Tomatoes, even. But I'm telling you. It's like one in the bag and you're doing your best. Ah, they're just. See, when you burst it, it's nothing like you get in the shops. It's just sweet. And I nearly said mushroom in there, tomato -y. a really strong tomato flavour, it's just so good man. You see mushrooms and tomatoes becoming a, a thing in my life. But the other just key folk like they hats off these man because it's so good. And I say 
It's actually quite fun. All I like to do is manage to rustle up something with that. So all we need now is a dogfish. Surely we can catch a dogfish. Well, that's the, the mushrooms, the vegetables, all, all gathered. As you can see, the views are just unbelievable, aren't they? Every time we come here, we catch dogfish. As we said earlier, dogfish is it's going to be the main part of the catching cook. I've just got a terrible feel, I'm not going to get one. Alex has already had a dogfish like he's looking up at his rod down behind me. I, uh, I've had a few rattles on my, I've got a wee scratching rig rod out. Um, wee scratching rig hooks, wee tiny baits. Our mackerel bait isn't the greatest, really hard to cut into the strips. I'll just try to discuss what to do there. The big rods, I've got one big bait out as well. Alex has two big baits out. So. To complete this video, all we need now is a dogfish, or a cat shark, or a rock salmon, whatever you care to call them. I prefer cat sharks, but today we're going to stick with dogfish. I think I do like cat sharks. <laughs> Mackerel? There's a mackerel. Yes, yes, fresh bait. We've got good bait. <laughs> oh, and we've got a dab. What were you just saying there about mackerel? Happy <laughs> days. So the wee bites were obviously a nice dab, which I'll show you. Let me get a nice mackerel. Alex into a fish. We're just cutting up that fresh mackerel. Huh? That felt heavy. I take a run. Oh, let's get another run. And he's missed that again. I was getting bites up there as well. The fishing's not exactly living up to expectations so seeing as it's quite quiet still keep mind the rods they're just in the background there uh, in fact gordon your right hand rod yes it's somewhat buckled over. it's buckled go and go and go and sort that first yeah, we never got that. i got that <laughs> Ah, it's just about it's big bowed. Aye. Well, it was a bit of weed. Good gub my ankle. But a slightly bigger dab. That's a dab, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice spots on that one. Ah, slightly bigger than the last one. We did catch our target species, the dogfish, however. It did look too cute. <laughs> it's too small. So 
he went back. So we're still dog fishers. Alex is pretty confident we'll get one. Well, it was inevitable, inevitable that was going to happen. Rod buckles over there, big, big lump of weed on it. But no, still no fish, still no dog fish. A couple of wee dab. Uh, but yeah, mushrooms. Let's let's make something with them. We've got loads of them. Uh, packed a load up yesterday. We've got our giant polypore. But then in here, we've also got chanterelles. And then we've got some of this bullet. The orange birch bullet. And I've semi dried it. And apparently if you semi-dry this, and even fully dry it, if you fully dry it, you can store it for up to a year, I've heard. But yeah, that's the three mushrooms we're going to use today. Dry garlic, add that in later on. So yeah, giant polypore, dried orange birch bleat, and some chanterelles. Cook them up, they all cook it so at different, different times, so we'll do them individually. And then mix them all together and yeah, make some sort of mushroom patty. A little bit of patty on toast or patty on bread or something like that. So yeah, let's get let's get these on first. So yeah, dried dried bullets. They're going to take a wee bit of time to rehydrate. Uh, but yeah, to concentrate the flavour, they'll last a little bit longer. Pan of water on here. Add a little bit of butter to that, I think. Then... We'll just tear these up, I think. They should rehydrate, plump up a little bit, but that flavour, hopefully, should be intensified. Get that in there. I'll let them just gently, gently soak. Now we'll cook up this polypore. Now the polypore, like I said, when we we're talking about the mushrooms, the middle bit might be a wee bit tough, so we'll, we'll get rid of that. So I'll take some of the pores off, as much of the pores as I can get off. And like I said, it just strips. You just pull it in the strips. Very much like chicken. Just gonna break that up. And it crisps up quite nicely in some butter. There you go, you can see the actual liquid there starting to turn a brownie kind of colour, and that's all flavour, you know. So we'll just slowly like that. Okay, we don't actually want to boil it, we just want to we'll turn that down a touch. We just want to soak them. And the secret ingredient. <laughs> A nice bit of thyme from, from the allotment. That garlic. Garlic and thyme will go in that as well. There you go, so that's been slowly simmering, soaking for about well, five or ten minutes. Uh, what we'll do is we'll give it a wee bit longer, but we'll just take off the heat. And we'll just whack it all in here. I'll just let that sit for a wee bit. And that'll give us a chance to get this polypore on. Again, like I said, it needs to be cooked for a fair bit. So we'll turn that heat up. I want to crisp this up a bit. Put a wee bit more butter in that as well, I think. I like that choice of butter. Oh, aye. It's only one and only. I think it's at this point we will add a wee bit of seasoning though. A bit of salt. Not too much. I'll let them crisp up. These are going to take about 20 minutes to cook. They do take a fair length of time. They'll turn black. Eh? Nah, they'll go black. Really? Ah. You know, look at like portobello mushrooms and like flat cap mushrooms. They all go black when you cook them as well. Yeah. 
There's only in the yard. I'll give that, give that a bit of time. Let these soak, soaking away in there. Loads of flavour, loads of stock in that. Great way to make a, a mushroom stock there is with the, the dried, dried mushrooms. It's literally, it's dried porcinis. Dried porcinis go for a fortune in posh supermarkets and posh stores. It's exactly the same thing. Almost the same thing. I'd rather be sat here eating it. One thing I will add, just before we go any further, is I have never made this before. <laughs> so I don't even know if it's going to be any good, but it, it should. Point out the advice, this isn't advice on how to pick and eat mushrooms. Aye, well, we, we said we were picking mushrooms there, but we're no experts in mushrooms, so do not take our word for anything that we've said in this, this video. Uh, if you're going to go out and pick mushrooms for the first time, you're not too sure what you're doing, do your own research. Look at some proper guides and proper books. Don't go with what we say. Because this might be our last video. Never know. <laughs> well, what's that pot post had about 10 minutes. So what we'll do, this still needs a wee bit more cooking so we can drain this now. Those mushrooms have soaked up all that juice, all that stock. So drain the majority of it off. Keep a wee bit. And then we'll just add that back into there. Turn that heat up a bit. I'll give that another 10 minutes or so. If you use fresh thyme, you need to use a little bit more because it's not quite as potent as the, the dried stuff. So I'll put a good whack of this in. I'm going to have a good whack of it in there. Oh, it smells dynamite. It's lovely. Try to keep as many of the twigs out, just want the leaves. Don't have any with me, but some pepper in there would be nice as well. We can do without that today. Right, next step. Those have been cooking for ages. Probably pour. And your belly. That goes in there, out of the way. Stick the pan back on. This time we'll get the, the chandelles on. And for the chandelles, I'll just stand up for this one. We'll just, just break up into the pan. These do not take long. Why don't you try these? They're good. They are really good. So these are the flavour, really. This is that's the mushroominess. That's going to be the mushroom. This is the, the sweet sort of nutty flavour that we're hoping for. Yeah, all those in. Turn it down slightly. I'll get a wee cracker. A bit of garlic in there as well. Not too much. We'll just just a clove, I think. Fairly fine. And then, yeah, they shouldn't take too long. Chandler, they shrink quite a lot when you cook them, and they were a wee bit top heavy on the sort of really kind of mushroomy flavours, and we're a wee bit low on chandelles. Luckily, luckily, we know a spot just across the plate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we went and topped up, <laughs> topped up our channels. <laughs> so hopefully that'll give it a wee bit more of a sweet flavour. But yeah, this stuff, the mushroomy sort of texture and whatnot, let's get it chopped up as fine as possible. Ideally, a food processor would be what we'd be looking for here. But when you're out and about, it's not going to happen. So good old knife. And we'll just give it a right good chop. We want to get it as fine as possible. It's kind of paste-like, as patty-like as possible. So there we go, that's the, the new 
backup reinforcement chanterelles cooking down nicely. All that water has evaporated, so give them another couple of minutes. These were our original chanterelles. I'm just getting diced up just to go in with uh, the rest of the other stuff. And then we'll combine it. I don't think I'm going to use all this. It is a, it is a wee touch, I find it. Gordon quite likes it. I find it a wee touch bitter. Uh, and it will be just that uh, giant polypore just going a wee bit over. A wee bit too well done. But it adds a nice mushroominess to it and a nice bit of texture. So we will definitely add it in. But yeah, probably only about, about half. But yeah, let's get, let's get these chanterelles. Chopped as finely as we can. Bad texture's not a bad thing, I suppose. And I'll add that into it. I'll leave that out of the way just now. Get all combined. So here again, interrupted by a knock on the rod. Patty's coming on. Still lacking a dogfish. Maybe this is it. Looks like he might have something. Nothing. That's a lot of bites we've missed today. It's frustrating. Frustrating stuff. We need a dogfish. So here we go. This is finely chopped as a... I can be bothered. <laughs> Ideally a wee bit finer. You just keep working through it with a knife and it gets fine. But you know what? Nice coarse bit of texture. Nothing wrong with that. Then all I'm going to do is add it to a bowl. And give that another bit of a mix. Smells good. <laughs> really smell that thyme through it, which is nice. And then, and then to combine it, this is the key. This is what holds it all together. Gives it a bit of sweetness, bit of texture. We've got a good old cream cheese. There's other ways to make patty, like a forest deer patty would be mushrooms and chicken livers. Then you need to let it set in the fridge and all the rest of it. There's just a bit of, bit of cream cheese. Bind that together. See how that looks. Now we can add a wee bit more if need be. It's getting there. I reckon a wee bit more cheese in there. And then we'll, we'll see how it tastes. Yes, and I'm tasting it first. <laughs> well, still not much action on the rods. However, at least we've got a bit of lunch. Not sure how this is going to taste, but it looks not too bad. Foraged woodland mushroom patty. Bit of rocket and some bread. I'll tide his by until the dogfish turns up. Hopefully. Oh, Alex rebated his rod there and I sneakily made some toast or fried bread. No, I like my toast. I've got the privilege of delving into this masterpiece first. I'll put a wee bit there. Something like the macro that.
spread that about. A couple of bits of rocket, which has grown in the allotment that Alex made. Grew. Morrison's if you're watching, he's a shout, that is amazing, the nuttiness of the chanterelles, or chan is it chanterelles, the other things, I can't remember the name of what they're called, birch bullets, and giant polypore, giant polypore. when we were making it, Alex wasn't sure of the, the giant polypore, I liked it, but she was all mixed in and ah, it's really good. I'm honestly, that's tasty. It's all right. Quite good actually. Quite mild. That bitterness is all but gone. Quite sweet. Yeah, quite tasty. Happy with that. Alex into a fish. Closer look. Do we have our dinner? Dogfish. It's a dogfish. It's bloody smaller than the last one. <laughs> no, it's bigger. Yeah, we'll take it. A nice eating one. It might be all we get, so the best. I'd say so, eh? Nice one. That is a bit bigger, isn't it? Uh, a wee bit bigger. There you go. Finally got what we're after. Dogfish. <laughs> now, it's it's never nice killing any fish or anything, but we always become almost become like so used to it when it comes to things like mackerel. You know, you catch so many mackerel in there, you just go through them fill a bag no bother without really thinking about it but it's not until you you come across a fish that you would normally 100% of the time throw back that you actually think you know I, I do feel a little bit bad uh, dogfish are such a such an endearing looking little fish you know they've got nice nice blue uh, green eyes sorry and all the rest of it I shall not help them no I know I know but hey a cow has got a nice big flutter of eyelashes but we all eat steak don't we so I've had this argument with people in, well, an argument a discussion with people in work about now if you're if you're happy enough to go to a supermarket and pick fish, meat, chicken off a off a shelf, all nicely packaged for you and eat it, then you really should at least once go out, find your own, kill it and cook it just to get that. Well, it's a respect thing, isn't it, more than anything? But yeah, it's never nice. But we do have our dogfish. And we will make very good use of them. We've got a we've got a prize recipe, hopefully, in mind. <laughs> in mind. So yeah, uh, we could do with another one. So we'll fish on and see if we can get another, uh, and then we'll we'll get cooking.
You look so pleased with yourself about <laughs> what you got. Well, it's my fourth species of the day. But it's not going to break any records. <laughs> so he's a rat. <laughs> <laughs> a wee thorn back there. I think that's a PB in terms of smallest fish. Smallest ray I've ever caught. It's the first ray today though, so maybe, they're, the maybe they're turning uh, turn the tide. A few more to come maybe. We're up and back, get a right good close up, look at that. The eyes, I think are the coolest looking eyes in the world of, of all things fishy. They're almost alien like. That's how I would imagine aliens eye to look like. The thorns just above the eyes as well. But their thorns run near enough all the way down its spine, down through its tail. Aye. Perfection. Now look at the wee mouth on. <laughs> right, let's get him back. Well, that's about the fifth and sixth ray we've caught between us. That's been the average size. To be honest, probably a bit smaller. The fish has been steady. I think we've had rays, dogfish, mackerel, dab. What else we had? Now that four species. We've got what we came for. Dogfish. So we'll get that good puppy back. Maybe come back earlier in the year and try and get his his great 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 grandfather. So we're going to pack up the fishing gear, head back to the car, have we change our clothes, freshen up, and we're going to make this dogfish curry. Go with that. And it looks as like if we're going to be in for a pretty bang at sunset as well. The hill's open. See you by the fire. Well there we go, as fishing session goes, fishing sessions go, wasn't the best, a lot of small fish, but we got what we came for and we got our two lovely dogfish. So we got our fish, we got our veg from the other day, we got our tomatoes, onions, picked up a couple of bits of garlic and ginger, a couple of limes, but then we've got the sort of main event in terms of the veg. We've got pumpkin, aubergine, courgette, uh, and some baby corn, uh, back coriander there as well. And the plan, I think, well, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a sort of a kind of light vegetable curry. Tomato sauce, got some coconut milk in there as well. We can add that to it, spice it up a little bit. Got some chilies from the allotment. I hope they're not here, but I'm sure we've got them somewhere. Uh, and Gordon, Gordon will tell you what he's going to do with uh, these. I'm a lovely guys. <laughs> you want to tell me? <laughs> right, that's that's my plan. Let's see what Gordon's got planned with this. We're going to try and skin these. There are many videos on YouTube we have both watched. Yeah. Now just to bring your attention to the, the, the movement here of this fish. I'm freaking uh, out the past couple of Unfortunately, days. that's just something that happens. The fish is not alive. Uh, it's it, it definitely happens with dogfish, and we've heard that from a lot of people. But yeah, we'll get get these prepped, and then Gordon can talk you through the plan. And then skewers, we'll get... Skewers, I believe. Skewers. Kebab style skewers. Yes. Sounds good. Sounds good. Right, get the fish, get the fish prepped, and then we'll get the veg on the go. Oh, there we go. That was a that was a two man job. We didn't film it because we didn't know how it was going to go. There are a load of videos on YouTube how to do this. We'll pop a link in the description for a few of them. But it turned out we actually did not too bad a job. Look at that. Now, this is my first time ever ever trying. 
rock salmon, dogfish, cat shark, whatever you want to call it. But it does look like a nice piece of meat. I'm actually looking forward to this. Now Alex fancies filleting it to get rid of that. What's it called? Cartilage. Cartilage that runs through the middle. Yeah. And then we're going to do a wee fancy skewer over the coals. So let's get cracking with that. We are short in time. The sun is going down rapid. We've got about an hour of good light left. So we're kind of rushing through this. And the midges are feeling the ass. Right, let's get on with it. That was a wee bit more challenging than I was expecting. It's quite a lot going on at one time, but I think we might have pulled it off. So I'm just going to stick on a plate and eat it. I think we're good. Let's get this plated up. So we want a nice bit of sauce in the middle, I think. Big bit of sauce for me. What do you think? A lot softer, the dogfish a lot softer than I thought, but it's tasty. Really, really, really nice. I thought it'd be a wee bit more like prawn sort of texture. But no, it's great. There's a win.
let's be honest. <laughs> That's my spicy to my macro to shame, doesn't it? <laughs> Turns out dogfish is really nice and I'm pleasantly surprised. Probably more folks who tried dogfish, plenty of them. What is he doing? Oh my god. That was um <laughs> oh, yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> Compliments to chefs in some countries. Don't even need to wash that. <laughs> <laughs> that could. 